Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling a thermodynamics problem that has to do with a piston cylinder device that has stops that impede the piston from, move to, uh, from moving downwards and can only allow it to move upwards. So we've done a video, a problem just like this in the past, a very detailed one, um, as a matter of fact. So if you want to jump back there and have a look, you can see, um, you know, the breakdown of the problem step by step. It's a bit of a longer problem. So for this one here, let's try to be a bit more uh, straightforward. Maybe be, be a bit faster on the solving of it. But the principles are the same, of course. <clears throat> the problem statement reads of question 4.35. A piston cylinder device initially contains 0.8 meters cubed of saturated water vapor at 250 kilopascals. At this stage, the piston is resting on a set of stops, and the mass of the piston is such that a pressure of 300 kilopascals is required to move it. Heat is now slowly transferred to the steam until the volume doubles. Show the process on a PV diagram with respect to saturation lines and determine the final temperature, how much work the water does to the piston, and the total heat transfer. <clears throat> so, what is going on here? We have water inside this uh, well container here, and this water is at 250 kilopascals, right? And on the outside, we have 300 kilopascals pushing downwards. So, in a normal situation without these stops here, what would happen is that this piston cylinder device would lower, right, until the pressure here would increase to 300, and then, and then we, would re we would reach equilibrium, right? However, because we do have the stops, what's happening is that we have 250 being pushed, um, the water is pushing upwards to 200 with a, a pressure of 250 kilopascals, and it's being pushed downwards with a pressure of 300 kilopascals. So these pistons, what they're really doing is they're pushing upwards the difference, right? So there's a pressure of 50 kilopascals that's split between the stops that we have there. Right? So let's, let's just say 25 kilopascals on each side, right? Doesn't really matter, but just for the sake of understanding what's going on. We are about to give heat to this guy here. So as we give heat to the water, what we would expect is for this water to, for this uh, water to gain energy, increase its pressure and its volume, right? We would expect it to do like so. However, it can't really do that until it overcomes this pressure barrier threshold, right? So what's gonna happen in effect is exactly what has happened in the other problem we talked about. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and do this three three times. Like one so and so, and one like so. Okay, this is my, what I'm gonna call state one. Okay, this is what I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call state one. And here we have 250 kilopascals, and we have, uh, what was it, 0.8 meters cubed. And I think we have something else there. Oh, we'll check in a second, right? And we're giving energy, we're being, giving heat, right? Energy in the form of heat to the water. So what happens there is that we expect this pressure to rise until when? Well, until it reaches the 300, right? Because once it reaches the 300, and know that it cannot expand until it reaches the 300 because it cannot uh, make its way upwards, <clears throat> okay? So we're gonna see this heat's gonna give energy to our water until the pressure inside is 300. 300 kilopascals. Once it's 300, what's gonna happen? Well, once it's 300, now we have equilibrium, right? We have 300 up and 300 down. So then, if I continue to put heat in here, what I expect now is this to increase a bit. Let's just say 301 for the sake of simplicity, right? And now it's 301, now this means it's greater than 300, so now it's gonna push upwards. But once it pushes upwards, what's gonna happen is it's going to use work, right? It's gonna do work to be able to push upwards. So it's gonna use up some energy, which means that this pressure is gonna go drop down. So it's gonna find equilibrium again. I give a bit more, give a bit more heat again, the pressure increases, again, it's able to push up a bit, again, it uses that, up that energy, it goes back to 300 kilopascals. That's what we call a quasi-equilibrium, so that's like almost equilibrium in Latin, right? So quasi-equilibrium um, state, because it's not quite equilibrium, because we keep changing that 300 to 301, 300 and a half, and then back to 300, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Yet, as this is taking place, the piston can move upwards, right? So therefore, as the heat continues, let me just leave S300 here. As he continues, what we expect is for this guy here to increase. We only got half of the half of the piston. 
there you go all right so we expect it to increase all right so now we're going to have a higher volume as a matter of fact we're going to have double the volume so 1.6 meters cubed right and because this is happening in quasi equilibrium we know this is going to be 300 300 kilo pascals. okay so that's in a nutshell what's going on so let's go back to the problem statement and see some things that are important for us to be able to um, solve this uh, piston cell device at 0.8 and it's a saturated water vapor okay so saturated water vapor there you go that's already a very important information for us to keep let's put it here set water vapor because obviously this is um, one thing we can use for our advantage in finding the properties um, at this stage the piston is resting until the stops and the mass of the piston is such as so that's that's how we know it's going to go all the way to 300 so it requires 300 to be able to move right <clears throat> from 300 it's free to move any push we give upwards or downwards is going to move this piston uh, device uh, the heat's now added slowly this slowly is a giveaway for the quasi equilibrium uh, situation that I was making a reference to uh, until the volume doubles right so this is how I know it's going to be 1.6 meters cubed it's just double this guy here right show the process on the PV and then okay final temperature what's the final temperature what's well, the temperature uh, this guy here which I haven't called anything let's go ahead and say this is my state 3 and this is my I'm gonna call state 2 and it's just a transition state but let's just give names so it's easier for us to relate so what's the final uh, temperature it's gonna be T3 right what is T3 uh, how much work does the water do to the piston so <clears throat> Note that from here to here, no work is done whatsoever, right? Because there's no change in volume, so therefore no work. So in reality, all we need to find is what is the work from here to here, and that's sufficient for us to find the whole work done, the water doing what the, the work done by the water to the piston, so from two to three. And then the total heat, well, obviously the total heat is going to be the heat here and the heat here. We can break it down into two things, or we can just find initial information, final information, and use as a bundle. So I'm going to go ahead and say Q1 to 2 plus Q2 to 3 or Q1 to 3. Okay, <clears throat> beautiful. What is our game plan? We have all the information about this guy here and to be able to find the total heat, know that it asks for total heat, that word's important too because, oops, important too because that means that we probably don't want this in you know, kilojoules per kilogram, we want the actual kilojoules figure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the mass. <clears throat> Game plan is the following. Let's find the mass. Mass. And we can find the mass because we have everything we need from state one. So we can use that to find the mass of water we have. Um, once we have the mass, we're going to also find out what is the specific volume on state three. Because the specific volume here has to be um, this, just the volume divided by the mass we're going to find. find. There's no mass going in or out of this system, right? Um, so once I do that, I'm going to find specific volume on state three. Once I have specific volume on state three, I'm going to have pressure, pressure, and specific volume. That's two thermodynamic properties, which allows me to find out what is T three, which is one of the things we're after, right? So that's going to be one of the things we're looking for. Beautiful. What what then? Um, I can find out what is the internal energy from state one, all defined, and state three, all defined. And if I can find out the, so let's grab, let's grab internal energy one and internal energy three. If I can do that, I can relate using the first law of thermodynamics. I can relate what is the, the heat, which I'm looking for, right? But to do that, I'll need to work. So let me do this. This is gonna be our last step. To be able to do number six, I'm going to need to find what is the work. And the work I can find by integrating P dV as we're going from state two to state three. So that's going to be from two to three. <clears throat> All right, because the pressure is constant, 300, we know that. So we need to find um, the volume. Oh, we do know the volume. We do know the volume. This is also 0.8, right? Because it cannot change. It cannot change from here to here. That's why there's no work, right? Because the stops are the stops impede this guy from going downwards and it cannot go upwards until the pressure is 300. So we can find out what's the work and then we can find out the heat. Cool, so that's our game plan. That's how we're gonna solve this. Um, property to, oh, first the mass, so I'm gonna go to property table, so I'm gonna grab what is the specific volume of this fella here. And then once we have that, we can move onwards to part number two. Okay, so 
I'm looking for a pressure table in here we go, saturated water. Pressure table, 250. Here it is. 250. Beautiful. So I am aware that we have a saturated vapor. Saturated vapor, saturated vapor, saturated vapor, saturated vapor. Okay, that's what I'm really interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a specific volume, which I need to find the mass, right? And I'm going to go ahead and grab the internal energy because I'm, I know I'm going to need that too soon after. All right, so that's going to be 0.71873 meters cubed per uh, kilogram and 2536.8 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so. <clears throat> We know that specific volume one is point seven one eight three seven three, and we know the specific volume is simply the volume divided by the mass. So therefore, if I want the mass, all I need to do, if I want the mass, all I need to do is take the volume and divide it by the specific volume. So in this case, point eight divided by point seven one eight seven three. Unit wise, we have meters cubed over here and meters cubed per kilogram. So that's going to give me an answer in kilograms, which is great. And this gave me 1.113, so 1.113 kilograms. Okay, so all done here. Okay, if this was helpful, consider liking the video. If you have any questions, as per usual, just leave them down below in the comment section. And we'll talk soon.